you're welcome to the new Super Review here on TAV TV. My name is Williams Abule, and on today's show, we have a lot of interesting headlines coming your way in a minute, but that is after you meet my guest, Jennifer One More. You're welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes. And today, both of us are going to go through these headlines, and if this is the first time you're seeing this video, well, you have missed, but not to worry. Stay connected to us by subscribing here on this channel because this is where we bring you headlines across newspapers around Nigeria. And of course, we talk about these headlines and have you participate by dropping your comments and reactions on the comment section. We promise you would really love heat here on the program. So don't go anywhere. Let's see what the paper is for today. Friday, the 19th of May, 2023, looks like. And we'll begin with this day newspaper. On this day newspaper, we have a headline here. Wabote seeks double-digit oil contribution to GDP. NNPC to supply 300,000 BPD to Dangote Refinery. We have paid IOC's cash call debts, says Wanti. All right, so do well to go to page six of this day newspaper. That's where those details uh, are. We have other headlines here on the this day newspaper. We see FAC, that is FAC, this was 655.9 billion naira April revenue to federal government states LGAs. We see that on page nine of this day newspaper. Moving downwards, court reserves ruling in Atiku's motion for live broadcast proceedings. Court reserves ruling in Atiku's motion for live broadcast of proceedings. Page 34 is where you find details of that story right here on this day newspaper. EFCC probes Zamfara governor Matawale over alleged 70 billion naira fraud. Says one contractor collected 6 billion naira on 10 billion naira contract without rendering any service. Another collected over 3 billion naira for medical equipment supply contract. Commission traced payment of 400 million naira from governor's account to BDC operator. Very interesting uh, headline right there. And you find story on page six of this day newspaper. To the main headline now, it says, Buhari, Jonathan conceding defeat in 2015, unprecedented on Nigeria to bestow Tinubu with GCFR title May 25th urge diplomats to always respect nation's uh, traditional institutions, cultures. Ex-president preaches integrity, good governance. Nothing can stop transition of power on May 29, says SGF. Courts to decide whether to stop inauguration May 24th. All right, and lastly, I'll take this one. Still on this day, says two arrested in connection with attack on U.S. embassy officials in Anambra. Page 14 is where you get details of that story. All right, let me come to you, Jenny. Interesting headlines here on this day newspaper, but this very one caught my attention. That is a story about Governor Matawale of Zamfara State. A um, few days to when he will be leaving office, but he's already in the full radar of EFCC. They are coming after him, and uh, he has been talking too. He's been, you know, throwing words at the EFCC chairman, challenging him and all of that. They've been going back and forth. But here we are with a 70 billion naira fraud allegation on his name. Why or what, what do you see how or how do you see that playing out generally? Yes, um, what is happening to Matawale now tells us that um, nobody is bigger than the law. Of course. And that you should expect that at any, any point in time you'll be called to account for whatever that has been put in your, um, your care. In your care. Yeah. So you should be able to give good account sure. of whatever has been put in your care. Remember, people are watching. Mm -hmm. Remember, um, Nigerians are also watching. Sure. So when this loads of contract comes your way, <laughs> you know, you don't just siphon the whole thing. Mm. People want to see. Even um, governors that we see their work, I mean, we see it plainly and say these people are working. People still talk. Aside people talking, we want to know how have you utilized the money mm. that's been that was given to you to carry out such contracts. Right now, 
that uh, they want allegedly probe him that the EFCC, he mm -hmm. wasn't come out um, of office. Yeah, of course. Office. So of course. When, when they come out, lots of Nigerian governors, when they come out, something is awaiting them. Of course, of course. And that is when we, we, we know to the extent, like the other time I said it, that um, Buari mentioned and said he was baffled to mm. know that um, corruption mm. is um, to this a large extent mm. existing in Nigeria. Yeah. I was like, um, why is he baffled? <laughs> Even you right in know his administration, about yeah. When you are standing Outside, in a yeah. particular position. No, when you are there, in mm. there. But when you step out, oh. you now look at that position where you were standing and you'll be like, oh, so, 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 so thing was All there. Now down, yeah. his eyes is going to open wide open. So let me leave that as I was talking about Matawale right now. I don't know why he's worried. Mm. If the yeah. EFCC invites you, mm. go and meet them. Meet them and explain yourself. They've claimed that some contracts were awarded under you, and they found that that um, you didn't channel um, the, you didn't channel this fund to the right um, um, avenue. Yeah. So why not um, um, answer them? You don't need to talk. Just remember that EFCC is a body, mm. so you don't just talk. Mm. Visit them, of course. Uh, then, um, if they decide to keep you there, fine. If they decide to say go home. And come back, and this goes to every other governor. I don't yeah. think that um, because um, I have four years in office, I have eight years, I can do things and I get away with it. Just check out, look at it the other day. The U.S. had banned um, some persons, yes, no names from... not mentioned, yeah. that were involved in <laughs> yeah, political, um, political uh, matters yeah. during the irregularities yeah. around um, presidential and governorship election. And that is no longer, to me, um, it's no longer business as usual. True. It is no longer business as usual because so many of the governors in seat mm. right now that will soon leave seats, they need to be probed. True, true. So many of these governors, they have lots of revenues being generated from within their state. But what are these monies used for? True. And I would like to mention a name. I don't know if you'll pardon me to do no, that, especially the Abia State Governor. Mm. The, uh, the, the Abia State Governor. Um, Dr. Okese Ikbazo, mm. these people need to be called to book. When you look at it vividly, nothing, one fly over since this man started. And it looks like a huge thing has been done in Abia State. I mm. don't just want to use Aba only because Abia State is, is a very big state. Mm. It is a very big state. So what this man, this, people like this should be called together alongside Matawali, Matawali. Yeah. The, the, the former um, power minister right now. Is answering to the EFCC. That's Mr. Saleh Momon. Saleh Momon. Mm. 22 billion naira fraud. Mm. Well, they, 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 they've um, recorded it that he siphoned some of the money that was um, allotted um, to be used for the Zungeru um, hydroelectric. Um, mm. This thing. He, he has siphoned the money, and that was very possible. What are mm. these people using Nigerian money to do? That is why Nigeria is going down every day in infrastructural levels, educational levels. Poor infrastructure, poor. This is because um, one person that has been given that um, uh, um, whole lot of weight, mm. that has been given that whole lot of tasks mm. to carry out, has failed. Yeah. And when you fail, it's affecting the entire uh, um, um, citizens of that particular country. True. If, if EFCC can continue, if the people that are in charge of laws can continue to probe these people, it's not just probing. Call bring them, them to yeah. book, bring them in, and even let us also know when these monies are retrieved, yeah. what do they use it for? Of course, it, it is returned back to the coffers of the federal government, but then we, we then we don't know what the federal government does with it. And as, as mm. also my another question I have for the EFCC, <laughs> not just inviting these people, this time around, I think Nigeria has gotten to the extent that if you were in government, if you were in authority, especially the governors that right now, you know, when they were in office, they can be probed. But when you leave the office, they can call you oh, of for probing. Mm. And if you get to this and find out that you, you were involved in a, a um, um, fraud, yeah. you should be jailed for Christ. Oh, let, let, let us look at South Africa. Mm. Jacob Zuma. Yeah. Was he too big to be jailed? He wasn't. So why is mm. our own different here? Mm. The other day, um, Shul Garuba, the, um, um, the, the advisor to Buari, was, was um, publicly telling us that he believed that um, they are very clear right now. <laughs> That when they leave office, nobody should um, no probe them for no anything. But no. so let us look at every other African country. Even let, let's look at. Um, sometimes I do not like to compare United States mm. with um, Nigeria. Mm. But probe of all persons, 
is um passing through um so many problems yeah and some all that. some allegations some allegations yeah and, and I think if uh, Shogarba is saying that about Buhari's administration he could say that of his principal that is Buhari in person because well I don't think Buhari wants to dent his name. But that, all, that cannot be said of the people around him because we've seen a lot happen Happened. in a government that, you know, came in on the bandwagon of fighting corruption. A lot has happened within this uh, seven, and, uh, uh, seven years or maybe almost eight almost years. Almost eight years. Yeah, a lot has happened. And we cannot, you know, uh, remove all of that from Buhari because, I mean, he's at the end of affairs. What and what did he do? to actually prove that he really fought hard against corrupt personnel within his government because we cannot... You see, a lot has happened. A lot happened even unprobed in this administration. A lot. We, we don't want to name or start to list all those things that happened. But as Nigerians, if, you, if you've been in this country within the last eight years, you will know that a lot, a lot of terrible, unimaginable levels of fraudulent activities by government officials has taken place. The last one was the election. Yeah, I would say it like that. The last one was the election. But going back to Governor Matawale's matter, let's not forget that Boha, um, Zampara State is, is uh, listed as the poorest state in this country. I was about to say that, Mr. Abu, and state, you're having such... A state so huge. poor. You have the infantry to siphon, siphon up to 70 billion naira from such a state that is in that kind of uh, condition that needs help. You're taking, not, I mean. Yeah, Zamfara State needs help. They need help. I, I mean, mean they, 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 they are declared. In question for siphoning such huge so, amounts of money. I don't what know they use it for? what criteria to which they use in listing them as the poorest state in the country. But then we know that Zamfara State is also very blessed with natural resources like gold and all of that. Yeah. That's why we have a lot of terrorists attacking and trying to you know, um, hold territories down and say, okay, this is our territory. So they can mine gold illegally. But then the state government or the governors, as it were, uh, the, the, the outgoing and the ones before him, what have they really done to really harness their natural resources around them to provide IGR or do something to help to improve the economy of that state? Nothing much. Rather, what we see in Nigeria in general is that people plan on how they are going to steal money even before they get into office. So these government or, um, or office holders, they see these positions as very juicy. So they plan ahead of time. And no states, I don't think this, this is even, uh, uh, Governor Matawali is one case out of uh, many. Because a lot of governors are going to come out being proved and found guilty of I remember, stealing. I remember the case of... Um James Sibori uh -huh. from Delta State. Oh, yes. Adaro, James from 1999 to 2006. Yes. After the whole thing, he ran. He ran. He left the country. And but uh, thank God for the time UK. His case we resurface. Thank God for the UK. The UK were, was able to jail him for the same fraud <laughs> that he ran away from Nigeria. So for. this time around, so it's, um, it's quite so many unfortunate. Of the governors should get ready. Yeah. Because um, in James Sibori's widest dream, he never thought of that. Yeah. He was actually living in affluence. He was living large, like nothing will happen when he leaves the office. But it's unfortunate. I keep uh, referring to uh, Peter Obi. He's one man that um, Nigerians or politicians, Nigerian politicians, should actually um, take a lead from because he, after you know, uh, leaving his position as governor for eight years, he was one governor that beat his chest and challenged every you know um, uh, anti graft or. Um, organization in Nigeria to say, check, check, check me, fact check me. I never stole a penny. And then I even left for my state to carry on from where. So, I mean, we need more people, more governors like that. Okay, that, that's something that a lot of people have disputed though. Did he and actually leave for his state to carry on? Uh, like, that, that's, that, that's what I'm saying. That yes, right but that, he keeps saying that. And nobody right has now. been able to prove it wrong with facts. They keep coming to say, okay, that you're just telling stories. Uh, nothing, nothing was left behind. But you have not been able to show us figures and facts to say that. So, well, yeah, well anyways, that will, that will also make us understand that some of these governors are prepared to go um, into office to try and um, 
have um, make themselves before going in because sometimes you notice that if this person is not made or if the family is not that balanced, mm. they, they begin to come in with this mindset uh, well, and come they, together. Uh, yeah, uh, Peter we had lots of um, had Okay, but then I don't think any places. politician, I don't think there's any current politician that is vying for any uh, or that has gotten into office um, as governor. That is a poor man. Most of them are billionaires okay, in their so own right. Okay, was a lecturer in you know, for Christ's sake. Okay, told, okay, but then, Asepa, okay, let's whatever, even say... So, and I don't think lecturers okay, are being paid <laughs> huge. Okay, he may not, but then he's a businessman before he even got into office. Aside that, he had sponsors. You know, they and have godfathers, godfathers that will invest in them. And then when... How many companies did he own, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, bottom line is that, please, governor, stop stealing. The other day, I saw Okonje while advising incoming governors yes. that you should focus on taking care of civil servants yes. in your state. And harnessing the resources that is um, It is simple. What exactly are we bringing new people on board for? Leadership. Please deliver quality leadership. That's all we're asking That's for. Is that too hard to do? That is not too hard to ask. Deliver quality leadership. To the extent that people will not even think or know or even concern themselves whether you're stealing or not. Because let's but look at the Ebony State Governor. It, yes. He could have done a lot, but I wouldn't know if... Um, <laughs> we also have our Governor Wiki here that Very has, well. that has delivered... Very well. Make sure Well, that one, infrastructurally, yes, infrastructure he has delivered. But there are other well. areas where we, people will question and say, okay, you didn't touch this area, you didn't touch that area. But he will say, in his own words, he will say... touches everything, what good. will happen to the incoming <laughs> What is the person going to do? Is he coming to sleep? Interesting, interesting. <laughs> well, let's move away from Governor Matawale and uh, that's of this day newspaper. Let's see what other headlines on other papers look like. And this time we're moving to uh, the Daily Sun newspaper. Uh, oh, I beg your pardon, Vanguard newspaper. Uh, yeah. And on Vanguard for today, the 19th of May, 2023, we see as headline here, U.S. convoy attacks. Police arrest two suspects. Gunmen kidnap core members returning from rivers. Um, I'll take that again. Gunmen kidnap core members returning from camp in rivers. Page six is where you find details of that story. Very scary story there. Uh, I mean, I, I, let me take that headline again in case you didn't hear it again. Gunmen kidnap core members returning from camp in rivers. Go to page six is where you get details. Media play crucial role to advert to avert crisis wars. Sultan and Khan, SGF, all of this, uh, all of them were speaking, and uh, you find story on page eight of the Vanguard newspaper. We will move on to the main headline now. It says patients groan as doctors strike enters day two. Patients groan as doctors strike enters day two. Exodus hits government hospitals as private hospitals record. Brisk businesses. You see that story on page 13 of the Vanguard newspaper. Sheung Kuti court extends detention by four days. You find details on page 7 of the Vanguard newspaper. Right under that, Bauer must quit now. CSO still federal government. Details is on page 9 of the Vanguard newspaper. We also see here 10th uh, National Assembly inauguration. Opposition parties worry over bid to alter rules to allow President APC Chair witness reps voting pattern. Opposition parties join forces with Abbas. Why I chose Abbas over Bitara, uh, Gadji, other speakership aspirants, Baja speaking, regrets installing Tambowal as speaker in 2015. Rebellion against APC will not stand. Abbas speaking. All details of that story you find on page 5 of the Vanguard newspaper. And um, at the bottom part, you see Montgomery appointed new British High Commissioner to Nigeria. Page 9 is where you find details of that story. All right, Jenny, I'm back to you. And this time, <laughs> there are two stories I'm interested in here on the Vanguard newspaper. But let's start with this very, very troubling one that says, Gunmen kidnap core members returning from camp in rivers uh that is directly uh or how would i put it it's, it's, it happened within our domain here in river state yes. and that's uh, such um, a story of concern yes. core members returning from camp um kidnapped how do you react to that story yes 
um, it is a very sad one indeed that um, the kidnapping these days, um, the insecurity these days is growing so wild mm. that you cannot ascertain whom is going to affect. Yeah. You can no longer predict, you know, if it was before now in this country, we say that um, it is actually affecting the, um, the um, elites. Let me say it's actually affecting those with the money mm. or those in greater positions. Sure. Uh, and those people will try to flee. But right now, it's getting to the, the, to the common man. Mm. Imagine, let's look at it, core members. Mm. What has a core member got to offer mm. to a kidnapper? What, what would the federal, can the federal government actually come out and say, this core member is ours, let's pay. Is the federal government going to pay you? The federal government don't pay um, any ransom. That is to tell our Nigerian government that um, we are really crying, we are lamenting. Um, Nigerians are no longer happy with the state of insecurity. And but um, normalcy has taken place. I must tell you, mm. um, yesterday, um, though the occurrence took place on Sunday, mm. but yesterday I was at a gathering, and that's the NYC at PT. Um, I happened to um, witness it, and um, um, the director um, of the camp, that's um, George Ofonga, he mentioned that they've actually um, retrieved. Um, some of the core members from the den of the kidnappers mm. successfully mm. and some were also plans were also being made to also retract some from their den and oh. however this is um actually going this information came from that particular um gathering the nyfc at 50 the person that represented the police command um Chibike Wogu mm. mentioned he advised everyone, not just to the core members, but especially being core members. Mm. He remember that you are also a target because some of these um, persons out there that are into one thing or the other feels that you are a government property. Yeah. So let me kidnap you. But also, they issued this advice to the um, core members. Mm. Please do not travel at night. Please do not um, travel... Um, alone mm. and please when you're going to places that you don't know don't go there late because that was actually the major cause of um this particular kidnap mm. that um some of these core members left their place and i don't know i think that is akoko you know state and um they were kidnapped around emoha they got there very late actually some others were telling them that please mm. alight as um our that stay here with us sleep over they said no we must move and in some cases like even a com right now, I can't travel at night mm. because you can't tell what will happen in the day. Mm. Let, um, <laughs> talk more of the night. <laughs> talk more of what will happen in the night. Yeah. So to Nigerians out there right now, we need to find a way to be very security conscious. Let us not leave the job for only security personnel yeah. to do for you us. Have to do your as part. an individual, as a parent, you need to teach your children. This is some um, um, common security measures yeah. that you can take mm. when you want to enter a bus, when you want to, especially when you want to travel. Yeah. Having adults like this, core members, go in groups. Mm. Sometimes avoid late night journeys. It's true. They're wrong. Very true. And don't go to lonely places. Yeah. You don't know this yeah. place yeah. for Christ's sake. It's, it's quite yes, an unfortunate um, thing that happened. Um, it's and, unfortunate, but yeah. we thank the River State yeah. government for They've been swift. For this Even swift though we heard and, another report that those core members that, you know, uh, the government is claiming that they have rescued uh, those ones where the, the the few, about five of them, but were, that were able to, you know, escape, escape during the, you know, the kidnapping. Uh, but then, that notwithstanding, we're happy that those ones are safe. But, um, uh, you know, rescue efforts are in top gear yes. to rescue the other the police core here members. The police in River State are not sleeping Of course. I that. mean, recently in River State, uh, there's been this heightened, uh, you know, insecurity going on around here and rapping. then we also see the police trying to step up to the challenge yes. because moving around river state right now there are policemen at most you know areas within the state uh, like driving around i see them everywhere yes. stationed at different corners once in a while they do stop and search but then we don't know why this is so we don't know why there's this heightened uh, uh, security uh, alert within the state but though it, I believe a lot has been going on, leading on to the inauguration, and then they just want to keep the calm. Inauguration is coming up, and of course, everywhere is test. People, because of the uh, well, uh, because of the way these politicians got into or won their elections, of course, everywhere will be tensed. So, but then that does not amount to lives being kidnapped, people being kidnapped, especially core members, innocent 
core members that are just serving their countries. If they have their way, they will be in their houses. But here they are, moving from one state to the other, okay. trying to serve the nation for one year. So please, um, they should be safe. Security uh, agencies, please do well to help our core members stay safe. But we pray for the quick release of those who are still in the kidnappers' den and come out safely too. All right, we'll move on to the other story here on Steel on the Vanguard newspaper, and that will be patience grown as doctors strike enters day two. All right, they've been on the news for a while. That is medical doctors um, uh, on strike. Uh, National uh, uh, Association of Residents Doctors. Yes. Yeah, so they are the ones striking, and uh, they've been making a lot of demands. I, I, I was listening to the Minister of Labor the other day, Chris Ngige, and then I hear him say things like, what they are asking for, they are um, asking for too much. They are, yeah, they are feeling entitled and all of that. And this is just a five-day warning strike. If the, labor, uh, if the Labor Minister is already taking that position, only God knows what will happen, whether the strike will be longer than five days after they call off this very uh, warning strike. But we're already seeing uh, uh, that this strike is already taking a toll on a lot of uh, patients, especially patients that are visiting uh, federal health institutions and state health institutions. It's already taking a lot of toll on them. And from the reports here, it says there, there has been mass exodus from these uh, uh, government institutions to private institutions, thereby you know, making these uh, private institutions, which are also owned by these doctors that are on strike, they are wow. having a field day. What's your reaction to that story? Anyways, Mr. Abule, we shouldn't <laughs> expect less yeah. from um, the doctors here in Nigeria, mm. especially the government workers. So far, they've been asking for something to be done, especially increments mm. in their salaries and um, meeting up some other um, regulations. But mm. the government right now have not done anything. It's not as if... Um, I'll be siding the resident, the doctors here, yeah. or siding the government. But um, this is the health sector for Christ's sake. Um, there needs to be quick response to whatsoever it is. Um, I know that uh, they are humans. Um, there are people's fathers, there are people's husbands, mm. there are people's um, they have families brother. to take they care have of. Families to take care of. Um, it is not in their best interest that they go on a strike. But sometimes that which is fetching you your daily um need mm. you need to work very hard on it to see that um it brings more on okay. your table okay. so i think the minister um labor minister chris and mm. should um have a meeting with mm. this particular set of people we don't want we know that they've had longer strikes yeah than this this is just a one strike like you mentioned <laughs> for five earlier. days yeah. they've had longer strike but for how long will this continue mm. in nigeria um we don't want this cannot look like the ass to strike mm. because um so you can compare the two. These are people's health. We, like the doctor said earlier, a particular doctor said, they have some people that are booked for surgery right now. The person that are booked for surgery and you're going on a strike, what is hmm. going to happen? Such risk. You Such know, risk. Uh, yeah, but then, well. So on the other hand, mm. these same doctors, they can't stay without eating. Remember, most of these doctors, they have their own hospitals. Of course. They have where they're working. Mm. Uh, we're not just... um. I don't think uh, I wouldn't blame them right now because um, you're still helping the people. Since mm. these people are lying down there in the government hospitals sure. and no one is attending to them, they better refer them to their own hospitals. Of course. So the government, mm. you know, why the government hospitals sometimes are better for mm. the citizens is that there is a um, subsidized. Yeah, the, the fees there are really subsidized. Yeah, thank you very and much. And they've got lots of equipment. And, so, ways, and right? so you have more experienced hands in, yeah, in, in this uh, government hands. hospitals and that's why you know people go there no matter what and most times when the private hospitals can no longer handle some of these um, you know uh, conditions yes. they refer them to the state uh, owned or federal institutions health institutions that are really well equipped to deal with these matters but we hope that the labor minister and of course the government will listen to them uh, one thing of um, uh, uh, of concern or surprise to me is the fact that they are having this strike a few days it's to the end of this administration. Yes. So I don't know what they plan to achieve. We, are, are they already, you know, trying to warm up the next administration that, guys, you guys should be ready for us. We are waiting for you to start because you will start with us first. I don't know. And we also know that ASU in recent time has also shown some, you know, signs of the fact that they are still going to go on a strike. 
so, they should, sorry, excuse me, but they should know that right now what is on the mind of this um, administration that wishes, that wants to hand over mm. to the next one. What is in their mind now is lots of plans to carry out the inauguration. Very true. Lots of plans, you know, there's mm. even no hearing right now. Mm. We still have the tribunal ongoing yeah. and lots of adjournments. So, but then we, we, of we know that, so, we know that uh, the, the government, the incoming, will need maybe a month or two or three. To even balance, to into, balance into, to, I mean, to, I mean, there's a lot of handover no to do. So whatever warning strike or whatever these gov uh, these doctors are trying to achieve, we are yet to see it in clear terms. But we know that what the, what they are asking for may be legitimate, but the timing is what I really am not sure. Yes. Thank you very much, Jenny. We're going to go on a quick break. Don't go away. Stay with us right here on the newspaper review. Once we come back. We take our last paper for the day. Hope you are dropping your comments. Please do that. When we come back, we'd love to hear from you. Hey there. Are you looking to record your videos? Do your voiceovers and take your professional pictures? Look no further. With our state-of-the-art newsroom, photography, kitchen for our food content creators, and exclusive children's studio, we certainly can deliver the best studio experience. Our carefully designed studio space can bring your diverse creative content ideas to life. We aim to consistently serve value to our customers far and wide. Come, let Tharv Media give life to your dreams. Tharv Media, a slice of infotainment. Welcome back. We're still here on the New Super Review. I want to thank you so much for staying with us right here on the program. We are back with the headlines, and this time we're going to take on the Daily Sun newspaper for today, the 19th of May, 2023. And uh, the headlines here, and don't forget, I'm still here with the beautiful Jennifer. Jennifer. One more. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jenny. All right, let's see what the headlines on Daily Sun looks like. Uh, on Daily Sun here, we have NNPC pays off $3.8 billion JV cash call debt, aims to grow crude oil production. 1.8 million barrel per day in July. Page two is where you'll get details of that story. To the main headline, it says May 29th, no court can stop Tinubu's inauguration. The federal government speaking says NSA warns unauthorized persons to stay away from Eagle Square. Buhari to confer Tinubu Shetima with GCFR, GCON. All right, you find details of all of that on page six of the Daily Sun newspaper. We also see as headline here, Tribunal reverses reserve, res, reserves ruling on Atiku Tinubu live broadcast request. Why we oppose it? Ainek Tinubu speaking, it's on page six. Tribunal reserves ruling on Atiku Tinubu live broadcast request. Why we oppose it? Uh, Ainek Tinubu speaking. Page 6 is where you get details of that story. Court remands Sheon Kuti for additional four days. Wow. Page 4 is where you, you get details of that story. Are you surprised? Yeah, he's on vacation. Uh, unless he'll be enjoying his vacation, you know, for, for being on really at some point. We don't know the backstory, but whatever. I keep saying that whatever the provocation was, uh, that policeman was wearing his uniform. And that man was representing the the entire federal republic and of this country yes you cannot do that you, you cannot you cannot encourage on a yes country. you cannot encourage other people to do that you may have done it in the past and gotten away with it but this time it made it to the public and of course you don't expect the law to look away from such um you know unruly and uh, you know risky behavior you know and so I'm not surprised, but then we're also pleading with the police force to handle this case professionally, yeah. not maltreat the young man. He may have erred, but we are looking that justice take its course yeah. and uh, so that everybody would learn the lessons that, are, that is required from this kind of uh, yeah. situation. We also, we, you know, we, police has been in the spotlight after this happened because a lot of people have been digging out videos of how they have been on the other side of the table harassing, uh, you know, innocent Nigerians and all of that. But we know how all of that play out when Nigerians and we've been seeing a lot of a lot happen. Let's get on with our headlines. And this time we we'll take this one. It says Anambra attacks police arrest two uh, uh, two raise criminal camp in Ogbaru community. 
page four is where you get details of that story. We also see here, uh, New Moon, Sultan directs Muslim to look for crescent of Dhul Qadar. You find that story on page 26 of the Daily Sun newspaper. Despite postponement, NMPC spends 200 billion naira on national census. Page 26 is where you get details. Akbabio hails Aisha Bowari over inauguration of AFLM, AFLPM building. You find story of, uh, on page 26 of the Daily Sun. All right, that's all the headline I'll be taking on Daily Sun. If I do well to pick up a copy and read up all those headlines you heard me read to you a short while ago. But before then, let's take on this story. May 29, no court can stop Tinubu's inauguration. Federal government speaking. Are they thinking that uh, something will happen before the inauguration? Am I in the mind of the federal government? <laughs> okay, well, with statements like this, one will begin to wonder. All right, but then, what do you think of that story? Statements like this um, seems like a threat. Mm. But anyways, it's not a threat. Um, it's just um, a statement. Um, but uh, it could be dwelt upon and could be seen from different angles. Um, like you've just uh, mentioned, um, seeing that there's to some extent a level of fear. Mm. Fear is um, growing from the side of the government. But I know that actually nothing is going to happen. Yeah. But remember that um, this other side, the opposition, are still in court. Um, yeah. Maybe they're trying to speak from that angle because, um, on a, let me use my word, on in your mouth. Mm. Uh, normally, um, while these people are in court, mm. this man shouldn't be sworn in. That's the position That's of some the people. That's the position of some people. Mm. But it's taken, everything has taken um, a new look mm. that um, the court will still be ongoing and the inauguration will come to be mm. but nobody is doubting it nobody is dragging it because come may 29th um some weeks um it's about two weeks from now um well i'm a tinibu will be sworn in mm. successfully <laughs> no this is one nigeria mm. no one is asking for this if nobody is asking for what mm. i also encourage um supporters of um the opposing candidate and also supporters of tinibu to please maintain calm because yeah. the, the ego square is not um a place to be Toilet. Yeah. Uh, it's not a children's toy. Yeah. But and and right now it is that. highly being fortified. Um, fortified yeah, is towards the, the inauguration. To yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> it's highly being fortified. <laughs> yes, very um, true. Towards the inauguration. Mm. So whatever plans of any group is uh, brewing up or whatever plans are coming mm. up with please um do not avoid um, it. Avoid it. Um, no, avoid don't, it. Don't, 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 don't um make that day to become um, a black day yeah. for you yeah. because even if you do any silly thing, the government, everything will still um, mm. move on. We know that Don't some people, on. you know, some people may want to go and protest yes. that day, saying, ah, that what you people... That is not a day of protest. Hello, please, avoid trouble. And, you know, and that's why I believe that the federal government has been, you know, louding this kind of statements for a while, saying, please, if you have any plans, kill it, because we are also ready. We are ahead of you. Whatever, you know, threats you have will never succeed allow the constitution to take its course while those people that have any grievances can seek redress or they're already seeking redress at the court so let them continue with that while we do what is required constitutionally of us you know and at this time we don't want to get into situations where you know people are killed for no reason we've seen things happen around us like the sudan war it's because of cases like this you know agree i no agree um, the two of us must hold power. That's why the, the Sudan war is up there. Yes. And we, we know the innocent people that have died and the chaos that has erupted in Sudan. Let's avoid all of that in our country. We are, yes, in a very delicate place. Nigeria needs a lot of healing. But we believe that due to the court process that is going on, that will also address some of the many questions that we have in our heart. So let's allow the justice system to continue to do their part while the inauguration goes on and of course we also see in that report yeah. that Bowari is also going to confer on Tinibu and Shetima with the, yeah the wow. highest highest uh, you know yes. titles of the country on the president elect and his vice president just few days to the inauguration proper 
to kickstart the whole process. So we're looking out. Just to show you that everything <laughs> has been planned. Yes, and then the, the plans are in top gear. So me, I'm very excited about uh, days like that because of the colorful uh, occasion. Okay. And, I, and I'm really hoping to see that happen in this time. Not beyond the occasion too, we are also hope because we have only one country, which is Nigeria. We are hoping that this new administration will come on, uh, come on board with cylinders firing to actually uh, cause a difference. Because I mean, he's coming on to uh, governance uh, on the uh, on the uh, heel of a lot of controversies. I wish that this new administration will come in and begin to douse the tension from all quarters as yes, they carry on. And we <laughs> hope to see um, democracy take yeah. a better look, yes, um, come sure. from a better perspective um, from this 2023, from this new administration. Very true. Of course, we think that democracy has lasted about more than two decades. Yeah. This is our more than two decades yeah. of democracy here in Nigeria. Sure. And um, so far, so good. We want to believe that some things that were actually condemning in democracy will become um, better. We yeah. begin to applaud Very democracy true. come the new administration. Very true. So I want to thank you so much. Thank you the, so much, um, Jenny, yes, for please. your insightful commentaries. Thank, thank you. you. And to our viewers, I want to thank you so much. But I'm afraid this is where we'll draw the curtains for today on the News Super Review. Make sure to join us next time as we bring you another interesting episode of this program. But if you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Please go ahead and subscribe right now by clicking on the subscribe button and turn on your notification because that's how you get notified whenever we come up with a new episode of this program. Also connect with us on all our social media platforms. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and on Twitter. Find us at Star TV on all of these platforms and connect with us. Until next time I come your way again, my name is William Tabule, and this has been the New Super Review. <laughs>